Hola, cage fighting connoisseurs. This is Kidnate of BloodyElbow.com, joined once again by Zane Simon, the Zane Simon, also known as that effing idiot Zane Simon. How dumb do you feel after watching two and a half hours of so-so Brazilian fights to get 30 seconds of Ronda Rousey? Did you pay $55 for this? I mean, the people who paid $55 for Ronda Rousey got 34 seconds of Ronda Rousey. Well, yeah, but I mean, like that's you know that that's what you're getting out of Ronda Rousey. It, yeah, it's, it, it's true. It's not it's about true. the fight. You're not even watching the fight at this point. It's the experience. It's the idea of like, you know, you're watching her add to her legacy, go out, dominate the next challenger, and you just, you know, the the whole thing you're watching for is how quick and how brutal. I, I mean, and it was the, quite quick and exceptionally what? brutal. It was quite quick and exceptionally brutal. Yeah, it, it was it was super brutal. Like that, you know, that's no way to make a living, Betch. I hate to say it, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, exactly, exactly. I don't know what they're paying you for that, but th it is not enough. No, no. Although it could have been more brutal. I mean, there was no like sustained ground and pound beating. It's I mean, true. it was a quick. It, it was not Jessica Penne, Joanna, and J Chick in terms of fistic beatings, but no. still. No, I mean, it was a knockout on the feet. It was a clean knockout, not a technical knockout, yeah. a knockout. So, you know, there's really no question as to who the uh, better fighter is. Um, Ronda Rousey didn't use a judo throw. She got a clinch within 15 seconds, but she didn't throw her. She shoved her down, backed her up against the cage, and just beat the crap out of her on the feet and knocked her out cold at, at Correa's yeah. own game. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was it was what I had hoped to see out of that fight when Ronda Rousey was talking about wanting to punish Betch, which was that she wouldn't pass up an opportunity to finish the fight. She would just, like, test herself a little more, do something different, you know? Yeah, and she definitely did that. This is the second time, I believe, that she has avoided the armbar finish, the other one being against Sarah McMahon when she beat her with knees to the body, which might have been I more think brutal. Also KO'd Alexis Davis too, didn't she? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're correct there. You're correct there. Although I was a TKO, but still. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, just uh, a spectacular night from Ronda Rousey. Uh, all indications are it was an extremely popular event. Web traffic was insane, um, which wasn't really a huge surprise. I mean, given the amount of publicity going into this fight, there was even though the the fight was in Brazil, which usually cuts way back on the amount of mainstream U.S. press a fight gets. Uh, this this fight lacked very little for press. I mean, it was covered in the New York Times, all over the place. A lot of women I know who are not in any way, shape, or form MMA fans were very attuned to this fight. So, big doings. Ronda yeah, Rousey. no. I mean, Ronda Rousey is the kind of... And I, I you know... I'm gonna. I feel like I'm gonna say this at least once more. While at, at hardcore MMA fans talk about how they don't think Ronda Rousey is that great, a lot more were on board for this one than last time. But she brings in an audience that just does not otherwise give one shit about this sport. No, that would not, never not cover enough. any part of it for any reason except Ronda Rousey. Yep. Yep. And so, you know, what's out there is Cyborg Santos. Is she even Santos anymore? She's Christian Cyborg. Justino. Christina. So. J Justino. Justino. Just Is that going to happen? Is that fight going to happen? I mean, do we have anything else like to look it. forward to? Doesn't sound like it. I mean, the other day Joe Rogan was saying how he wished they had a 145-pound division for Cyborg, which at that point, you know, I mean, we know Cyborg's under contract on the chance that she makes 135. Like, that contract is sealed up. They, they've they kept her out of Bellator in case she can make the weight. But, you know, now... She's been fighting it, for it's, Invicta, which airs on the UFC Fight Pass Network. Yeah. And it now it sounds... It, but she, it sounds like she's happy to stay in Invicta and defend her belt there. And, you which know... Which is no one of the stupidest decisions you can imagine a fighter making. I mean, this is a... The fight against Ronda Rousey, especially, I think I think Chris Cyborg would still be favored to beat her. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, no not at the point. Like, cause, I mean, a big part of the the odds, setting the odds, is odds that people are going to bet on. And everybody, like the, the mass, oh, outside the hardcore circle, everybody's going to be betting Rousey. Like, nobody's going to be picking against Rousey for any fight. They don't know who Christian Cyborg is, you know. That's true. That's true. But uh, I would favor Chris Cyborg to win that fight. The size I advantage. Fight. I think she's got a striking advantage. Rousey's improved and improved and improved. But 
I don't know. She might. She might be able to beat. She's playing with. Like, if Chris Cyborg c- couldn't knock her out with the first punch, or like knock her silly with the first punch, I think she gets thrown on her ass and submitted at this point. Like, it's entirely we, possible. But it's also entirely possible Cyborg does knock up. her silly with the first punch. Like that yeah. is totally possible. It's not. You know, I'm not saying it's like way out of the realm of possibility, but I think it would have to be that. Yeah, but I I think really Rousey needs that fight. Uh, to real, I mean, she's already far and away the biggest uh, female mixed martial artist in history, way eclipsing Gina Carano. Chris Cyborg, not even in that discussion, because Cyborg really is just the woman who stopped Carano. I mean, or, she's probably the biggest female combat sports athlete in history at this point, in, in terms of drawing yeah. power. Muhammad Ali daughter, Muhammad Ali's daughter is the only one even close, and. And she's probably not that close. Like, I don't know how no. big of pay-per-views she ever did, but I doubt they... Not this big. No. Not even close. Um, I don't think they ever broke 100,000 with a woman headlining a pay-per-view before Rousey. I, I believe so. you're correct. And so, you know, Rousey has set records, shredded records, but I would really, really love to see her tested uh, at least once in her career. And yeah. Chris Sullivan is the only fan. woman out there that's even potentially capable of doing that. Yeah, for hardcore fans, that fight should happen. That's the fight we want to happen. But, I mean, it's, it, it's unfortunately, it's not Pacquiao Mayweather, you know, as much as we yeah. want it to be. It's like Pacquiao versus some guy that, like, actually, you know, beat him once or, like, fought him a while ago and everybody thinks is really good and could secretly beat him, but nobody gives a shit about or knows about or is paying any attention to. Like, if Rousey just continues to coast out her career against whatever they can drag up and throw in there, she'll still do monster pay-per-view numbers and make all her money and be a huge star and success. It's 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 quite true, but I still think that that fight would be much bigger uh, by it, it multiple. Uh, you know, because that's the fight people would actually be going, this is the fight Ronda Rousey could actually lose. And yeah. you just have to show the Gina Carano fight and what Chris Cyborg did to her. I mean, just the still photo of Cyborg holding Carano's head with one hand and bashing her ear with the other, uh, that sells fights. That's That sells pay-per-views, um, and, and we hope it happens. But enough about that. Let's move on to the rest of the card. Once again, Antonio Hajerio Noguera got robbed against Shogun Mauricio Hua. I thought he won in 2005. I thought he won tonight. I did too. I thought that, you know, I mean, he, he won, clearly won the first round, and then the third round was close. I think it was a 10-8 round even. It could have been. It could have been. But whether it was or not, I, I mean, now I don't want to say it was a 10 8 round. He got hurt too many times with too many shots in return. That's true, but he had him very close to out. He had him very close to finish. But then his sub attempt, I thought, in the third round was by far the biggest offensive swing point in an otherwise close ish round. Yeah. Well, and that, to me, should have yeah. sealed it up for him. Yeah, you get you get a guillotine. He had that guillotine on for an extended period of time. It was extremely tight. At one point, I thought Shogun was actually unconscious, and Shogun's answer was some body kicks. I mean, like not even ten of them. And it, it it's really frustrating me that that he won that decision when I think all he did was not lose. Yeah, I mean. Either way, I, I just hope that it doesn't give anybody any, like, Shogun is back feelings. <laughs> Especially not Shogun. <laughs> no, I hope not. I mean, because Little Nog came into this with the opposite of hype. Like, you yeah. were practically in tears at the idea of, of Little Nog fighting uh, anybody. And I, I picked him. I, I, I picked him to win. I thought, you know, I, I, have been, I have been well off the Shogun hype train. As much as I love Shogun, and this is, you know, I, I really do, but... I, I've been off the Shogun hype train for a while, so I picked Little Nog. I thought, you know what? I know, I know that what happens when Shogun hit, gets hit hard, and we saw it again tonight. Yeah, I don't. I I know what happens when when Little Nog gets hit by Rumble, but which is you like know, getting hit by a truck. Exactly. OSP is not Rumble. OSP's yeah. got some power. He's legit, but he hit Shogun once, and he fell like a sack of potatoes. So, I I thought no, Noguera had a good chance of winning it. I thought he did win it, and that sucks. But oh yep. well. I mean, at least the fight was still fun and good. Like that's just what shocked me. Uh, was- yeah, I think all the old timers uh, did pretty well on this card. Even Big Nog uh, acquitted Shockingly, himself respectably. Yeah. You know, and so, however, the coming event followed up two 
really stinky Ultimate Fighter finales that just had no business being on a pay per view. We we talked about the contractual reasons. We believe yeah. this, these fights were forced. You know, the the UFC has a contract with Globo Television Network in Brazil that mandated these fights be on the main card. They were supposed to be on a card that happened in Brazil. That card was moved to Florida. There were visa issues. These guys couldn't get into Florida, so here they are on this on the next Brazilian card, uh, which happens to be one of the bigger pay per views of the year. So. Glyco Franca submitted Fernando Bruno to win the lightweight ultimate fighter. Do you have anything else to say about that? He looked I mean, it's too bad that they were in the middle of this card. Yeah, it would have been fine on fight night or fight pass. Yeah, I don't think they were terrible fights even, but they just came with like this overwhelming feeling of a whole card in which a lot of a lot of fights were just spent waiting for shit to happen. Like is somebody going to get a win here? Is somebody going to finish? Oh, it's kind of a slog. Uh, you know, like, just not a lot of hugely, like, brilliant performances. And, you know, and so when you have these two tough finale fighters, like, in the middle of this big pay-per-view that people are waiting for and waiting through and they only want one fight out of it, then just being okay is just the drizzling shits. Like it is not anything anybody wants or cares about. Yep. And, Absolutely. I mean, Franca looked good. I thought he looked like a good athlete and a developing young fighter. And I thought Lopez won against Vieira, but they both. Absolutely. I, I agree with that too, that the Reginaldo and Vieira uh, took a unanimous decision against Delano Lopez. And Lopez is the only guy that came close to winning the fight. I, I, I was baffled. Yeah. I thought the first round was pretty even. I think you could score it for either guy, but I thought Lopez clearly won the second and the third rounds. Yeah, I, I thought the third round was really close, and I edged it for Lopez, but I thought he won it in the third. It just, yeah. I mean, the thing is, though, is that they all look like decent talents. Like, they're, they're going to make the UFC deeper. None of these guys look like cans that are just going to be gone in a hurry, but they did nothing to help pace a seven-fight main card. No, there was no... You know, Forrest Griffin versus Stefan Bonner frisioned to these fights. I mean, the, the, these were not emerging superstars uh, on, on the card. So, enough about the tough fights. Stefan Struve finally showed he had a jab against Big Nog, Antonio Rodrigo Noguera, the twin brother of Rogerio Noguera. I, I was pretty impressed by Struve's performance. Yeah, I mean,. God, the guy's only spent like a decade now working to become a ranged striker, so it's good to see that some parts of it are finally sticking. Yeah. He's still like, you know, he's still like one of those how hard can you punch carnival games out there. Like just, you know, you, you, rear, you rear back your hand hard enough and throw it at his head and you're likely to hit it. Yeah, and but Nogueira did, he, especially early on. He backed him up against the cage and was lighting him up, but now, Big Nog just doesn't have the pop in his hands anymore if he ever did. No. And Struve has finally figured out how to actually throw regular kicks and a jab and a few other tools to keep to keep people from being able to, you know, land that huge haymaker easy, like every single top minute of the fight. That's been the problem in the past is that yeah. just like every minute they can clock him once really hard let's just back this big goofus up against the cage and punch him in the jaw as hard as we can over and over again and see how long it takes him to fall down and uh, you should have like one of those little lights that go up over his head that show like the rolling up numbers like the- <laughs> <laughs> however you were picking struve to dominate big nug on the ground and that was not what happened the one time that they had any sustained ground fight Nogara was actually threatening I, I don't know if I was picking him to dominate, but I thought he could win it there, and it would just be sad. I think we, we thought he could... You know, Noguero, he... Grappling is, like, the last thing that seems to go when guys get old, so Noguero, you know, he still has some tricks up his sleeve, but Struve still shook him. I mean, it wasn't like yeah. Noguero just, like, absolutely overwhelmed him on the no, ground. No, not at all. But, but uh, you know, Big Nog did have his moments, at least, and, and hopefully he retires after this performance. I mean, the guy uh, at one point was the best uh, heavyweight in the sport. I think he's a Hall yep. of Famer for his, his initial title run in Pride. Uh, Fedor Emelianenko's biggest rival during Fedor's peak uh, had three incredible fights with Fedor and uh, went on to win the UFC Interim Heavyweight Championship. I mean, this guy is a Hall of Famer all the way and a complete class act. And 
you know, I just hate to see him. You know, we've seen him get his shoulder broken in the in the cage against Frank Mir. We've seen him get knocked out uh, again by Frank Mir and other people that, that have no business, you know, knocking him out. And so, hope Big Nog retires, and I hope Stefan Struve can develop into a heavyweight contender. Although I really have no illusions. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that yeah. just made me laugh like a like a crazed bad scientist when you said that. that. Well, you know, you can hope the guy's young. He's he just beat a legend. I mean, you know, you I hope there's an upside. So you know what? If he like, if he sacrifices enough goats, he can probably win the title. I, you know, that's, maybe so, maybe so. And speaking of sacrificing all goats, uh, heavyweight is all food. Silva. Came back and and yeah. beat the shit out of so a Hulk Pelele. I mean, uh, survived the first thing. round, uh, ground and pound attempt from Pelele, and then just beat it, beat the piss out of him on the feet the second round. Yeah, that's a sad thing. I mean, th- that fight unfortunately says a lot more bad things about Pelele than his loss to Jared Rochalt in the UFC because he had Silva dead to rights. Like- he had him down on his back and. You know, at, at heavyweight, especially somebody who hits as hard as Pelele, he should have done some damage. It wasn't even apparent that he did any damage, really. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, just like Silva didn't, he looked marginally better. He looked better than he did when he was getting shelled out of the building by Arlovsky and Mir, but he didn't look like this marvelous reincarnation of when he was like, you know, 285 pounds and just this box of weird sinew and muscle. He looked, he still looked fragile. And Pelele just didn't have any, like, he had one way to win this fight. And when it stopped working for even a minute, he lost. Yeah. He, and he got there. He got, he got Silva yeah. down and, and, and should have won it. But I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm looking at the heavyweight rankings, and uh, neither of these fights were really relevant at all. Antonio Silva being the top-ranked guy at number 12 going into this. Stefan Struve came in at number 15. So, you know, presumably they'll both move up a notch maybe, but still, uh, you know, I don't know. These were, these were more placeholder fights than anything important. The one important fight on the card, though, is women's strawweight uh, contender Claudia Gadella doing what everybody expected, utterly dominating Jessica Aguilar. Aguilar had a couple moments in the fight, but that was about it. Yeah, I, I said Lombard Shields. That was my prediction. And it that wasn't was quite that intense, like, though. It, was it wasn't like a, quite that intense, but no, the strong like weight women's she's strong not going to have that version. power. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, but she's, you know, she came into the fight the number one straw weight contender. Uh, she came out of that fight the number one straw weight contender. I still didn't see anything that made me think that she's going to beat Joanna Injicek, though. Yeah, it, it, that's just, um, I mean, I think that's one of those things where Injicek's on this constant acceleration of improvement. And Gadell has, yeah, she looked better. She, her, you know, her boxing looked smoother. She looked more consistent, but she also got tired later and she didn't show anything that was just like, I, I don't think she's improving in the same way that Yin Jacek is, which no, is like marked, marked jumps from fight to fight. Like last fight, we saw, finally saw her pull out a kick, you know, her kicking game, which is every bit as good as her punching game. And suddenly, you've just got a much more complicated fighter to deal with for everybody. At this point, honestly, I'm much more interested in Joanna Injicek against Ronda Rousey than anybody in the women's band and white division right now, even Holly Holm. Yeah, that would be a hell of a fight if they could make that happen somehow. That would be weird. It would be weird because, I mean, Injicek, she's she's probably a natural 125-er. She's a big straw weight, but she's not. she would be a tiny... Yeah, it, it it would be a two a two uh, weight class jump, but you know, back in the day, men's uh, fighters underneath a hundred shit on underneath one hundred and fifty five pounds used to jump around all the time, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, uh, you know, it's it's one of the few interesting fights for Ronda Rousey that's out there, and NJ Check is a just a wrecking machine. Yeah. So it would be know. it would be one of the very few legit like. Even if we knew Rousey was probably going to win, it would be a legit, fun, interesting fight. Like I would be, yeah. I would really like to see that. I would pick it to go the way uh, it went when Mike Tyson fought Michael Spinks, who was the light heavyweight champion at the time, and utter annihilation. But still, I was, you know, interested in seeing Spinks get a shot against Tyson. I'd be interested in seeing Injacek against Rousey, but I think Injacek has to beat Gadelia again 
first. Yeah. And the, because the first fight was very, very close, and people thought Godella won it. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So let's run through the the the, the preliminary cards. The two fight pass car fights. Uh, Guido Canetti upset Hugo Viana, but really not much of a big deal. Nah, um, Viana just he doesn't have any consistency in his game at all. He's just, I mean, he's a guy who's more likely to throw a jumping round kick than a jab. He was the better athlete in there, but when your game is that funky, it Kennedy showed some real improvement, and it doesn't take a lot of improvement. I I was impressed. He he looked like yeah. he'd been, he looked like he tightened up his game to be like a functional MMA game, and then you know that really explo exposed just how wild Viana is. Yeah, Viana really just needs to pull his head out of his ass and get better coaching, I think. But it might yeah. be too late. Um, and then middleweight Victor Miranda uh, demolished Clint Hester with second round TKO. Yeah. Very impressive performance. Great, great win for Miranda. He's really got a win right now. I mean, I don't know. This the middleweight division is full of guys that will go three and two through five fights. You know, like every single yeah. dude outside the top fifteen and even up to the top ten is basically like you give them any five fights at middleweight and they'll go three and two. And Hester is unfortunately another one of those guys. Miranda's he's old enough. He's got the experience that I hope he can put together a run, but I, you know, like, I don't know. They just, it, that, that was sort of more proof to me that Hester is a pretender than it was that Miranda is going to about to go on a huge run. Yeah, but Miranda is somebody, Miranda is somebody I didn't even think was at all competitive in that division. And now I do. Yeah, so. that's true. He he did look good. He looked like he was he looked like he's ready to make the best run possible at this point. Like he he does he doesn't look like he's missed his window. He looks like he's fighting his best. Yep, yep. And let's move on to the Fox Sports one uh, four four fight preliminary card. First up, Bantamweight Uri Alcantara dominated Leandro Issa, took a unanimous decision. Although all three judges had Alcantara losing a round. Oh yeah, he lost the first round badly. He he just. He tried to outgrapple Isa and found out that Isa is a way better grappler. But then he realized he didn't have to outgrapple Isa because Isa can't wrestle. And then he just beat the piss out of him for two yeah. rounds. So. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, you know, and Alcantara is somebody that I don't feel like he's really going anywhere in the Bantamweight mm -hmm. division, but it was good to see him get a win. Yeah, that it was. He's, he's still, I think, getting declining a little physically, but technically and athletically, he was still way above Issa in 90% of the fight, just not ground grappling. Yeah, yeah. And so Alcantara came in, ranked at number 13 in the Bantamweight division. He might jump a little bit. Um, Probably not. But that, I don't know. I hope not. But that division's so stagnant, so he might. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're looking at guys ahead of him like Eddie Wineland. Uh, who just lost a fight. True. So, you know, the, the things can happen. But moving on, welterweight prospect Warley Alves uh, uh, submitted Nordin Taleb in the second round. Impressive performance from Alves. Everything we yeah, want to see. That's, that's exactly what I love to see out of that. That was, a, I mean, and that just showed what a great building fight it was for Alves. Because Taleb, you know, he's tough, he's in shape, but he's not. A fin like he's not a devastating finisher. He's not a guy who's going to go out there and catch you in a wild, you know, leg lock or go out there and knock a guy out with one punch. It gave Alves a tough challenge to work against, but he looked. I mean, he's just a hugely beastly athlete. Just one of those guys you see him do shit out there. You just like, oh my god, how did you do that? Yeah, yeah, and so hopefully uh, he's somebody who can develop into a, a talent. I don't know that he's ever going to be a force in the welterweight division, but I, I like seeing him become a top. 15. I think he's got the yeah, pure athleticism to be a top five guy, and he's training under Jacare. So, and he's really young. So, I think, That's you know, true. he's only somebody... 24 years old, 9 and 0, and training with Jacare, uh, uh, excellent, excellent example to learn from there. Um, I don't know. The thing that I'm just not seeing any killer app in his arsenal that, that makes me think he's going to be a, a top five contender, but you're probably right. I think he, you're, you're right. I think it will be a top 10 level contender and maybe more. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. But uh, up next, Patrick Cummins uh, devastated Hafiel Fajal Calvacante in the third round. Um, you know, Calvacante at this point is one and three in the UFC. Um, and Patrick Cummins is going places again, I think. Yeah. He, he's, you know, it, it's. He's a good athlete and a good wrestler, and man, he can take. He, he puts himself through a hell of a beating to win fights. 
Th like, his eyes, it looked like both of his orbital bones could have been smashed in that fight. Yeah. I mean, and he did not take that many shots. I mean, it was just like... But some of those heel kicks from the bottom yeah. were just brutal. Uh, and I really thought that Faisal would have knocked him out with one of those in the second round. I was amazed when uh, Cummins uh, took it and really didn't even pause and just continued the beating. Yeah, I, I think the big, the really good sign for that fight in Cummins is that in the third round, even when he looked kind of tired, he was implementing his game exactly as well as he was at, in the first. Like, just going out there, get the huge slam takedown, switched up to the elbows, which is an, a little easier. It's a much more body weight strike than throwing a punch, much less energy consuming. Get the finish. It, it was a great fight for him. I mean, even taking damage, it asserts him as a serious top 10 light heavyweight. Yeah, absolutely. And for Fai Zhao, I mean, this is a guy who's a, a really good kickboxer. Haven't seen a ton of his jiu-jitsu game, but he's a piss-poor wrestler, and he really doesn't have an answer for guys who can take him down. Yeah, and it just seems like, phys like his tr physical training is just not there. I mean, he just looked soft and out of shape, and we've already seen, like, against Thiago Silva, even in, you know, not that long ago, he was good for, like, half a round beating on Silva, and then he just faded. Totally. Didn't get hit hard, didn't get, you know, hurt or anything like that. Just suddenly all the gas was gone and Silva dominated him. Yep. And so, you know, I, I'm not seeing a ton of upside from Fajal, but he's still somebody I, I'm looking forward to seeing fight. I doubt that yeah. they cut him, but we'll see. But that brings us to Demian Maia's complete and utter oh. domination of Neil Magny. I mean, deep pants the guy. Took him down the yeah. first round, jujitsu him up for the entire round, but did very little to no damage. Yeah. But then came out there again in the second round, and this time choked him out. Um, very impressive performance from Maya, uh, and and leaves us with Neil Magny, who put together what a seven, eight fight win streak, seven fight, and uh, and now he just got humiliated by Demi and Maya. So I don't know what that gives us. Well, I think it gives. I mean, fortunately, it's welterweight, and so welterweight is like shocked chock full of legit prospects and guys on the rise. There's no lack of rising talent in the welterweight division. I think it just gives my, or it just gives Magny a real wake up call. This was his first shot at a real top 10 level fighter. And he lost, like he just has a major hole in his game. He's still only, you know, five years into his career, just coming up to the point that like things should start to be clicking. But this is that setback loss that shows him, like, you got to actually, you know, you, you've got some holes to fix that are going to be badly exposed. I honestly, even picking Magny, I thought this fight would go this way. I was just really happy to see Maya get a submission. He has so it was two, nice to see him. Yeah. yeah. He has two since 2009. Like, th that is way too long for a guy who, you know, suddenly with that one, he's like got one either the record or near the record for UFC submissions or something with 10. It's like you've had two for six years and you're still on a record pace. That is really weird drop off. So well, it shows how tough it is to get submissions in the UFC yeah. today. And it also shows Maya has been focusing so heavily on his stand up, and it was nice to see him go to his bread and butter and stick to the grappling game. I mean, he immediately shot for the takedown, got it, and then just worked. His, he had an overwhelming jujitsu advantage over Magni. And for Magni, it's like, dude, <laughs> learn to defend the takedown and learn to keep a guy far enough away, uh, you know, that you can do some damage striking. I mean, he had nothing for Maya, nothing. Yeah, that's also part of that is Maya is a scary good wrestler. People don't, I mean, he took down Chael Sonnen. I mean, yeah. They think of him as like, a, you know, he's this great controlling jujitsu artist. He's got some striking that's better than advertised. But the part that always gets overlooked is that he's seriously one of the UFC's very best wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. He's he's uh, got two-thirds of the game just down tight and has uh, improved his striking game over the years. So he, he came into this fight ranked at number six in the Walter 8 division. Um, not in title I think contention. it just reaffirmed that. He probably gets a big bump up after this to like a title contender fight that he's going to lose again and... I think, you know, unfortunately, I think he's perfectly placed in that division at number six, where it's just like he's beating the guy. He's going to beat the guys below him. But the only guy I could see ranked above him right now that I think he could beat would be Matt Brown. And that would be very, very yeah. difficult. But I could yeah. I could see him submitting Matt Brown. But but I would see him losing two out of three fights to Matt Brown painfully. So, 
Yeah, it's a tough that that'd be a tough one. He and Matt Brown are both in kind of a similar position that way, where it's like they're clearly a, a rank above a lot of the guys below them, but they're just not gonna be like the title contenders. They're the guys that separate the top five from the top ten. And, yeah, it's true. And they're, but they're a whole level beneath that top four of the division, which is really amazingly close with Lawler, yeah. Hendricks, McDonald, and Woodley, and Condit all in there. Uh, I think uh, I think any of those guys could beat any of the others on any given night. Maybe not Woodley, but the other the other guys I think uh, quite well. Anyway, so that's the card. But let's talk about Ronda Rousey some more because that's what people are watching the show. I mean, what do you say? She came in being compared to Mike Tyson, and she goes out being compared to Mike Tyson. This was a very Tyson-esque performance. She just beat the piss out of the lady on the feet, just straight boxed yeah. her up. I mean, it, it's – Ronda, like, watching her in the lead-up to this fight, even watching her warm-ups and her open workouts and stuff like that, you really, like – she just looks totally different than every other woman in that division. And, way you know, the things she's doing, the ways she's doing them – are frankly, you know, I, I, she set herself out as a special athlete. And at this point, we're really just going to kind of, you know, MMA fans are going to have to be comfortable with this idea that every time she fights, she is going to be, you know, it's that's the experience is her fighting. It can't, it's not just like, you know, you, you hear all sorts of stupid shit about, oh, well, you know, like her striking is really not that good if she were a man or whatever. And it's just like, well, you know what? She's not fighting men. She's not fighting <laughs> you know? men. And she, it, like, she's the best striker in her division. You know, I yes, will say handily. that. Handily. the best striker in her division. And the best grappler. And, you know, at the, maybe not the best – but maybe the best wrestler. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think she could out-wrestle Sarah McMahon pretty easily, honestly. And and who else is up there? I mean... Misha Tate and Sarah McMahon are, the like, the two yeah, wrestlers. And we've seen her team. grapple Misha Tate, you know, and utterly dominate her. So, you know, I mean, uh, it is what it is, and, and uh, she's amazing. And, you know, Misha Tate is probably the next title challenger, I think. And... Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, she's beat Misha Tate twice, once very quickly and once it took longer. But Misha Tate's the only woman who's given Rousey any challenge at all, and Tate's improving. Yeah. Yeah, she is improving. I don't I don't know. I, I just don't think <laughs> I don't think there's enough ways for her to improve to win that fight. I don't think there ever will be. No, she uh, she just doesn't have an answer for Rousey's judo or her submission game, and I don't think she's good enough on the feet at this point either. Yeah, I mean, what she's shown in her last fight is that when she bites down the mouthpiece and sits on her punches, she can actually generate some power and, you know, make something happen. But it, it's not like, you know, she's putting on this – a pretty striking performance out there where you're like, oh, Misha Tate's no. striking. Man, it's just looking scary. It's like It's looking like she's learned to throw some big overhand – like. It reminds me of Manuel yeah. Gamburian's striking game. I mean, uh, oh, big overhand right, you know, which is, goes a long way, uh, as yeah. you know. But uh, it's not going to beat Ronda Rousey, nonetheless. You know, Misha Tate's uh, easily the second most popular woman in the division, and um, you know, with Holly Holm, basically, her title run has been stillborn. Even though she's undefeated in the UFC, she's just looked feeble. I mean, she's got no power, and that's all she's got is a striking game. Yeah, and I mean, she'll get a shot. She will. She'll just be another lamb to the slaughter. Everybody, everybody who wins three fights in that division is getting a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so, you know, it is what it is. But all all I can say is, uh, you know, make your sacrifices to whatever heathen gods. Call out Cthulhu. Get Chris Cyborg in there against Ronda Rousey. Let's make it happen. Uh, there's rumors on Twitter tonight that Fedor Emelianenko signed with Bellator, so dreams of Emelianenko fighting Frank Mir, rematching Andrei Olovsky, those all seem to be out the window. Maybe not, but but still, you know, I, I just have this vision of a, of a mega UFC card with Ronda Rousey and Chris Cyborg as the co-main event, and I hope it happens. The co-main? Who would be the – oh, with Fedor at the top. No, not even with Fedor. I think I think uh, with Conor McGregor at the top. Um, you know, 
you know, uh, if you had McGregor Aldo, uh, like say they're talking about doing that fight at the beginning of December, you could put Ronda Rousey on that card. I think I think Rousey would be the co-main under Conor McGregor. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Rousey would be the headliner. Um, either way, I think a Rousey Cyborg fight. Uh, is one of the biggest fights uh, potentially to happen in MMA. And if Cyborg isn't trying to cut the weight, and she doesn't even seem to be trying, it's just completely lunk-headed move. Like, what kind – this woman has no other opportunity to make a million dollars in her fighting career. This is it. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on there. I really – I have no idea. Like, I, I just – Nobody, I'm not hearing anything about it anywhere from anyone that's like, and we know too that she's got like one of the best weight cut experts out there. She's got Gary Lockhart working with her now, so you know she's got a serious nutritionist that a lot of people are tr you know trusting her. Really, like you know this guy isn't just a guru; he's really legit. And we're still not hearing about it. We're still not, yeah. you know, no. this isn't like a year ago when she said she was going to make the cut, and we heard about it for. Yeah, and, and it's the kind of, I mean, yes, if she were just to attempt to cut the weight, uh, it would be very risky and healthy. But if she were to lose some of the weight, it's not impossible. As muscled as she is, it's not impossible I'm not, to lose You know what? I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert on her physique. I, I think a, well, all we do is pretend. Come on. I know, but that, that shit gets weird. Like, there, you know, there are, like, some legit MMA conspiracy theorists out there who are like, well, you know, if you look at her, you know, bone structure this way, you can see she's got an extra tube. It's just like, dude, I don't, you know, like – Maybe who know, who who the fuck yeah, knows? It's it's true, it's true. But all I'm saying is, I want to see the fight. Give me the fight, make it happen, because that's the only real challenge, the only real threat. Although I do think Joanna Injacek would be a, a fun challenge for Ronda Rousey. I don't think she's going to beat her. I, I just hope that if Ronda Rousey's really smart, that she just does like does one big fight a year and then spends the rest of her time in Hollywood. Like she doesn't Have really you seen need any of her movies. I don't care. Like, I just think, you know, like, it, it's, you know, she doesn't need to be fighting, I don't know, uh, oh, who's Jessica Andrade or even Misha Tate. Like, she doesn't need this Misha Tate th third fight. Like, no, no, but she does need to keep fighting and, and keep in the public eye. And, you know, but yeah, once a year, I'd personally like to see her fight three times a year, but I've got selfish business interests. Yeah. I mean, I, so. I, I, I would love, I like that, you know, she, how about she's Paige Van Zandt? Let's like look her against it. Paige Van Zandt, huh? Paige is a cutie. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a fun fight? <laughs> just, and just you just roll out the mud and like the yeah, the, yeah, bo yeah. the huge oversized foxy boxing gloves. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> that's all we got. I mean, that's you know what are you gonna do? But anyway, I guess that's our show. Uh, Ronda Rousey snuffed. Who was it she was fighting again? I already <laughs> forgot the girl's name. Betch Kahea. Yes, the, the destined to be at. Not even destined to be a trivia question in MMA history, just another victim of uh, Ronda Rousey's amazing title run. So, uh, we'll uh, give us a like on YouTube, subscribe to MMANation.com on YouTube, subscribe to MMA Nation on iTunes, follow us on Twitter at the Zane Simon, at KidNate, read us on bloodyable.com. Eugene will be back on Monday with Knuckle Up, uh, and then uh, we'll have the Care Don't Care preview. There's a fight next weekend. I forgot what it is. Oh, it's uh, Glover Teixeira versus Ovin St. Pru. So that should be fun. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll have a week off. And so, uh, but we'll rinse and repeat. We'll have the Care Don't Care, the Viva sections, the whole bit going into, I wouldn't say a big fight night, but eh, it should be a fun fight night. It should be fun. Good time. Yep. It should be yep. a good time. For those few of us that are addicted to face punching and not just dipping in because we heard Ronda Rousey was a big celebrity like so many of you watching. But anyway, I'm glad you're watching. And uh, adios, MMA aficionados. Thanks a lot, Zane.